Good morning to you. It is 10.06 Eastern Time, 7.06 in Las Vegas, which is uh, where Michael King is. 10.06 uh, in uh, lovely Cape Cod, Massachusetts, where Charles Moskowitz is. And you're on Princeton Research's Money Info. And uh, guys, a very pleasant good morning to you. Oh, good morning. Hey, I'll tell you, um, uh, Michael, uh, you are going to be uh, very pleased with this uh, first story that I literally just got off the uh, web uh, from my email. It's a company. Have you ever heard of Wallet Hub? It's a Wallet research Hub. company. Yeah, it's a research company that uh, has created a list of best and worst cities to start a business. And ironically, Port St. Lucie is number 13 in the United States. So, pat ourselves on the back there. Las Vegas is number 10. Jacksonville is considered number 1. Fayetteville, North Carolina, 2. Augusta, Georgia, 3. Jackson, Mississippi, 4. Memphis, uh, 5. And New Orleans, 6. Tulsa, 7. Columbus, Cape Coral, Florida. And then Las Vegas, Nevada. How about that, huh? Not bad. Not bad. But as far as employee availability, it gets into unemployment numbers, like real unemployment numbers. Unfortunately, Detroit leads the list at almost 30% unemployment. And the real scary thing is anybody who knows anything about Northern California, and Charles, I know you do because uh, you were in San Francisco for a long time, Stockton... Fresno and Modesto, uh, so basically Stockton, which is an inland port, uh, uh, right? It's sister city, really, to Sacramento. Fresno and Modesto all rank right behind Detroit in unemployment, which is real scary. Um, that's a salad well, bowl. The costs are so high in California. Yeah, the cost of doing anything. Yeah, you're right. There. But. Right. Uh, Las Vegas does have very reasonable costs for yes. almost everything. And actually, if you look at uh, some of the cheapest office spaces in the United States, you're right up there, uh, Char, uh, uh, Mike. Uh, it's uh, Cape Coral, Florida, uh, for some reason. And I have a hard time believing that their uh, um, rent per square foot is down to $11, but apparently it is. Uh, they're number one in the United States. But uh, Las Vegas is a bit at the heels of Akron. So, uh, wow, this, this just in. So uh, congratulations to all the entrepreneurs in Port St. Lucie uh, because uh, you're number 13 in the United States in an area to develop a new business. So that, that's kind of interesting to see. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm sure we're down at the bottom of the list, too. Well, uh, yeah. I'll tell you. I mean, just see which is it. kind of interesting because there's a lot going on here. Um, you know, I don't even see you in the top thirty. Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. There's nothing in Massachusetts that's uh, no, no. I, it, it's it, it's amazing. I mean, uh, but the, I'll tell you that employment number for uh, the Detroit area is scary as hell. I mean, when you're looking at almost thirty percent. Um, and, and I'm sure these are real numbers, you know, uh, unlike some of the bait numbers we get out of D.C. But, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. So, uh, so Mike, you've got all this. What was I reading? There's all sorts of uh, uh, conferences and confabs going on in Las Vegas right now. Of course, obviously, we'll have our big uh, broadcasters convention in uh, Las Vegas in, in April. Um, but... Uh, what was I reading? It was another huge group that uh, was in your area. I think it was uh, yesterday and today, but I, I can't remember who it is. But, uh, yes, uh, Mike, what what is going on out here development-wise? Oh, I know what it was. It was a NASCAR race that was there. And, uh, oh, yeah, quite, over the weekend. Quite successfully promoted, I might add. And unlike a lot of NASCAR locations, by the way, guys, that was almost sold out. Um, which, you know, said, put, put another feather in Mike King's hat here. I mean, I mean, I mean like, good job, Las Vegas. They did a very good job promoting that. 
But, uh, 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 yep, go ahead, Michael. I was going to say, uh, the, the most exciting thing that's happened uh, the last two weeks is that the fuel cell companies have sprung to life. And um, we have uh, one of them here. But uh, plug power, if you look at a chart of PLUG or FCEL or BLDP, BLDP is battered. Uh, FCEL is fuel cell. Plug is plug power. They've got a plug power is up a thousand percent in about a few months. Okay, Mike. Could I ask a Could I ask a question that may seem somewhat foolish? Oh, go ahead. In those, so I know I can. Go ahead, Charles. That's what the show's all about. Oh, I heard somebody talking yesterday about the differentiation of Tesla's batteries and these fuel cells. What's the difference between a fuel cell and a battery? Well, first of all, the fuel cell is using hydrogen. Oh. So, you can, so I mean, hydrogen has been known as an explosive uh, gas. Yeah. <laughs> Unstable and expensive to generate. Um, it uses, that, doesn't it use electricity to generate power? But keep in mind... Um, that uh, plug power was ninety cents in December, and it's eleven dollars right now. Whoa! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Now, so where does it, Leo Motors? Where does Leo Motors? Yeah, get their I was gonna just fuel gonna ask cell. It, do they have a fuel cell or a battery? It might be interesting. Um, Leo Motors is an interesting calculation at a dime. Where it is now, it's a, certainly worth a dime. You can risk a nickel, put a stop at a nickel. I would certainly buy it here at a dime, with it risking a nickel. And Leo Motors has a, a lot of technologies. Uh, somewhere to these, all of these technologies are now coming into the forefront. Look, Ballard in Vancouver, Canada, BLDP, went bankrupt one or two times. They struggled for 25 years to develop these products. Very Whoa. difficult, dangerous products. Wow. But they are now coming into uh, use. It's just you know? not un- it's just unsettling. Yeah, right. But, but it comes, you can get, get it from water. Isn't that right? Well, of course. Yeah, okay. So, you know, so it's clearly a endless source to use it if you can control it, I guess. Wow. Well, you know what other one uh, we talked about must be a year and a half ago, and it's been somewhat unimpressive. It's only up, you know, 150% was capstone turbine. Right. It's about two and a quarter. I think you bought Mike after we talked on a Thursday night show at about a dollar eight. So yeah. you know that one's that one's done pretty nicely. And uh, you know, but but you know, all these people talk about fuel cells, and nobody really explains what fuel cell is versus you know, a battery. Well, what really sprung plug power to life was a contract they got for six Walmart stores. Whoa. Right. Um, Whoa. So uh, this really catapulted the stock. I'll bet. Um, first moved um, the end of November from 90 cents to like a, uh, like a dollar 50 or so at the end of December. And then it, it rallied up to Four seventy-five, and then came back to like two dollars in January. February, it rallied from like two dollars to five dollars, and now it's uh, over eleven dollars. February, it rallied from like two dollars to five dollars, and now it's uh, over eleven dollars. Yep, eleven oh six. Up another seventy four cents today. Okay, now a dumb question here. Could you ever develop a fuel cell 
speaking of Walmart, to for a store to take the store off the grid. Could there ever be a fuel cell that powerful that could actually power a store without bringing in electricity? Because that could revolutionize a lot. I don't have the answer. Yeah, that that would be boy. That we got to get those guys from uh, uh, what is it? Plug Power. We got to get them yeah. on the air. Uh, that that would be very cool. You hey, know, it's 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 funny because there was a conversation a couple of years ago when all the big uh, credits, government credits, existed for solar. There was the discussion that some of the solar companies, and I believe, <clears throat> excuse me, Sun Power was at the forefront of this. And uh, Sun Power is a spinoff from, I can't remember, maybe VMware? Anyway, um, what they were talking about was the fact that uh, they would install these basically solar farms that we see everywhere else on the tops of the uh, big box stores. And that the upshot from that, there, it was like a 20-year deal because that was the life expectancy. So for the first 10 years, um, the company owned the equipment and the power generated, and, the, and the, like a Walmart could buy it at group and reduce the price. And then after 10 years, the, uh, the uh, panels and the system would revert to the big box store. And the discussion was, if they could put these in enough places, then the Costco's, BJ's, and Walmart's of the world could actually become power companies. Wow. <laughs> okay. That I mean for at least for a ten year period where they completely owned and controlled something that they didn't have to pay for. Yeah. Wow. It was kind of some sort of an uh, uh, an asset equity swap where the um, the companies who were putting them up would get to use both the rebates uh, and the carbon credit and the tax advantage. And when they were fully paid back, then the solar farm on the roof would revert the owner of the building. So it would cost those companies nothing to get their stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And, of course, reported as sales. I mean, you're talking about a solid integration between you know, sales, maintenance, and production. Um, and then after they got paid back, they give it to the store. Wow. I mean, you think about that, you know, every Walmart is a big box store, no matter how small it is. I mean, some of them are much bigger than others. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it you know, shows that there is some, you know, entrepreneurship and some interesting, uh, you know, forward-looking thinking in some of these companies that, you know, and I can't imagine that, that some of these, you know, some of these companies, some of these power companies that are uh, you know, coming to the forefront now are going to try and do it. Of course, you know, the first time that one of these fuel cells blows up, it'll be the same thing as the first time that the battery pack set the car on fire at Tesla. Mm -hmm. There'll be quite a shakeout, but, you know, again, that's part of the Yeah, but, well, can you imagine, though, of having the, a solar farm, if you will, uh, on uh, the roof of a building that's several football fields long? I mean, yeah. you, you know, that's... That, that's big. That, well, yeah. I mean, we're, that's one of those, where are you going to have enough room on land to pull that off? Um, but you know, when you start thinking rooftops, what, what a better place. Um, right. wow. That, that's... And, and unlike commercial buildings, unlike residential buildings don't have peak roofs. Right. So, you know, you can rotate them. It doesn't have to necessarily be a north, south facing, 
you know, a piece of property because you can rotate them during the day. Wow. Amazing story. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I was uh, d- double checking our uh, web newspaper, yournews.com, and the big story that uh, comes up is Chobani, which uh, obviously a lot of people heard about for the first time during the uh, Super Bowl. But it's the big uh, yogurt company that is uh, uh, going to sell $2.5 billion worth of stock, which is basically a 20% uh, uh, share in their company. And right now, Chobani is uh, what uh, making up more than 40% of the entire U.S. yogurt market. Isn't that amazing? Greek yogurt. Um, the way that I read it, Greg, and I could be wrong, mm-hmm. but they were going to sell 20%, and that 20% would give the company a two and a half billion dollars. I got gotcha. you. Okay. There you go. Yes, I did. It's a two and a half billion dollar company selling 20%. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I read it wrong. Yeah, you got it. Yep. Yep. Correct the mundo. But uh, if you, anybody. Anyway, uh, I want to mention something. Yeah. Um, we are in both accounts long the gold here. It's about 1350, 1348, maybe up a couple of dollars today. Um, on the chart. We have something that was talked about last year in the stock market um, about a cross on moving averages. And today, we're, we've been in the gold now. What we are having here is a cross. Term moving averages through the longer term moving averages in the upside. Um, and you just you don't get this a lot, um, but uh, this is the first time we have the 25 day going through the 200 day. Um, now, there was a guy who um, Mike is certainly familiar with named Dick Donchin. And he was the first one to use trend following, um, the trend following system based on a five day and a 20 day moving average. So, now futures tend to be rather more short term chart wise because they occur every month or every other month. Um, And so the five and 20 works really well there. What I use is a 25 and 50 day and I also use the 200-day. Now, when we when the 25 went through the 50-day to the upside in the beginning of February, the price of the GLD was about 121. In the next 10 days, it moved to 127. Mm. We've consolidated since the second half of February with slightly higher highs and slightly higher lows. And that moving average crosses today. Uh, we're currently at about 129, and I'm going to guess that if you know this holds true, that we'll probably see about 133, 134 on the GLD. So uh, that's a position we're in. We're in it for a lot of reasons, but technically, that's the reason that we're here. And when you see this in stocks. And this ETF is, you know, kind of governed by the actual commodity. But when you see it in stocks, um, it tends to be, you know, a a pretty good indicator. Wow. Interesting stuff. 